Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I am BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle, Washington with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time tuning in to a Foldit Lab Report, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science that goes on behind Foldit. This month, we have an exciting update for the AlphaFold tool in Foldit. This update is going to make it way easier to use AlphaFold results to improve your protein designs. We've talked before about how AlphaFold confidence is a good predictor for design success. If the AlphaFold program predicts your design with high confidence, that means that your design is likely to fold correctly when we make it in the lab. In this way, AlphaFold is acting like an oracle. You. Open your mouth, say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. It's helpful for the Foldit team for picking out the most promising Foldit solutions for lab testing, but it's not a helpful guide for you as a Foldit player. Until now, AlphaFold could only suggest when a design needs improvement, but it couldn't suggest how to improve a problematic protein. This new update changes that. You're cuter than I thought. This comes from research by a talented student named Susan Kleinfelter, who worked with us at the Institute for Protein Design last winter. Susan wanted to know if we could get more detailed information from deep learning models like AlphaFold to show which parts of a protein design are good and which parts need improvement. AlphaFold is built to predict the structure of a protein sequence, but under the hood, it's really predicting the distances between pairs of residues in the protein. Susan found that by focusing on pairs that are close to one another in a sequence, AlphaFold can predict whether residues are likely to fold into a helix or a strand. Are these residues likely to fold into a hairpin, like I designed, or some other kind of loop that goes off in another direction entirely? This precision helps us pinpoint problem regions in a protein design. Critically, Susan found that in many cases, a poor solution could be rescued by only redesigning these problem regions without touching the rest of the protein. So, if you've put a lot of work into a really nice hydrogen bond network in one part of your protein, but AlphaFold says there's a problem region in another part, that means that you can leave your hydrogen bond network alone and only make mutations on this side. On the Foldit blog, we've written up more details about this new feature, so you should check out the website for more, and you can try it out in the latest Foldit design puzzles. I think it's gonna help a lot. Also in the news this month, IPD researchers published a new paper about protein assemblies built from modular protein parts. You see, proteins in living cells tend to come together to form protein assemblies to carry out complex vital tasks. To replicate DNA, for example, dozens of proteins in the cell come together spontaneously to form clamps, clamp loading machinery, and multi-enzyme assemblies. If we want to be able to design for new complex tasks like this, we need to be able to build custom protein assemblies. The modular parts used by scientists in the new paper are actually folded designs from 2019, and folded players are cited in the new research. The new modular proteins can be mixed and matched to make roughly 500 new and unique protein assemblies. We think this breakthrough is going to help molecular biologists in the future when they want to mix and match proteins for new medicines or other ways that haven't yet been invented. You might remember that way back in October 2019, we mentioned some of this research in our very first lab report. And now for puzzle updates. We had lots of different Foldit puzzles this month. To learn more about each of them, check out the Foldit website for detailed puzzle descriptions. We had small molecule design to help design new small drug-like molecules for protac drugs. We had small molecule binder designs to design proteins that could bind to small molecules that are found in the body. We had protein binder design puzzles where we're trying to design a protein that could stick to another protein in the body. And finally, we had symmetric protein design puzzles where we're trying to design symmetric protein assemblies. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month, I want to look at a symmetric trimer design from puzzle 2096. This is a design from Fiendish Ghoul, and we see we have a, uh, a very interesting fold here with three helices that pack on both sides of a four-stranded beta sheet. 
Um, and this is a this is an interesting topology. I like topologies like this that have a mix of alpha helices and beta sheets. I like to look at the protein design default view. So this shows us all of our red and blue polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds either with water surrounding the protein or with other polar atoms in the protein. And we can also see all the hydrogen bonds uh, that, that these atoms are actually making in the design. Um, so off the bat, this looks like a very nice design with lots of orange hydrophobics in the protein interior and lots of blue polar residues decorating the outside of the protein. So that will help this protein fold up and remain soluble. At the interface where these proteins come together, we see we do have some orange hydrophobics, which make for sticky binding between proteins. That's good. And at the same time, there are some buried polar residues here at the interface that should help us with specificity. And again, the reason we want blue polars at the interface is not because they make binding stronger, but because they will prevent off-target assemblies. If we imagine how this design protein might come into contact with other proteins in the cell, uh, it's likely that they would create buns with these buried polars. So there's uh, these buried blue polars at the interface um, act as deterrents for improper assembly. And so this is nice uh, because in this design confirmation, these buried polars are actually completely satisfied. So these are making all of the hydrogen bonds they need to. And this is a very happy interface, it looks like to me. We do have a very extensive network here, starting with a histidine on one side, crossing the interface a couple of times with a couple of looks like asparagine residues, lots of asparagines that make nice hydrogen bonding, um, a big network that spans the entire interface. I also like that the, the helices at the interface are a little bit offset. You can think about helices at a trimer interface being parallel to one another, or they can be a little bit skewed. And the skew is kind of nice because it, it lets us have um, some more solvent exposed regions of the protein and then other more closely packed regions of this helix. So altogether, this looks like an excellent interface. If we look at the objectives, uh, we do see that there are two buns that Folded has flagged here. It looks like there's one asparagine at the interface that is not completely satisfied. Um, it's questionable maybe whether some water could get in there and form a hydrogen bond there. And I believe there's another one on a sheet on the backside, which looks like um, maybe some, some water could also get in here. Uh, so that could, that could just be a folded artifact, but we do want to look out for buns because buns will be problems for protein folding. Every polar atom in a protein needs to make a hydrogen bond either with another polar atom or with the water that surrounds the protein. This is excellent work from Fiendish School. Uh, as always, I strongly recommend that you share your favorite designs with scientists. We love to look at Folded Player's favorite designs, and we like to see what designs you think are the most significant or the most interesting, regardless of how they score on the Folded leaderboards. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.